So in today's video, I'm going to discuss how to write an email to a professor. And here I'm presuming that you are a bachelor degree student applying for a master's or PhD program, and you may want to get a scholarship from the university, or you are a PhD student applying for a postdoc. Or even you may be a UG student in your second or third year who is planning to go for a summer visit to a certain university and he is writing to the professor. So now let us look at some of the aspects which you should keep in mind when you are writing this mail. So again, the first thing I would suggest is that whenever you write such an email, you should put in a CV or a resume as an attachment with this document or with this mail so that the person knows something about you. Now beside this, you need to write this email and so you need to write it to dear Dr. Smith and then you start with your mail. So I think you can put this mail into three paragraphs and the first paragraph could be that mention a couple of sentences about this person's research which has an impact on you. Now here you should not copy and paste things from his web page but instead just look at the contents of his web page and maybe his papers and write a couple of sentences about what are the aspect of this person's research which has impressed you. Now this particular description should be in line with what is following in your next paragraph as to what exactly you want to do. So in the next paragraph, you can suggest a scientific problem which is of interest to you and which would also be of interest to this professor. Now, one of the ways to find this out is by reading some of his recent papers and also looking at his web page and also looking at some of the recent proposals which he has obtained. And very often this information may be there on his web page. Now, if you have some contacts at that particular university or you have a network of senior students and so on, you may be able to find a particular proposal which has just received funding. And this kind of information can help you greatly because you can tailor your problem to the research proposal for which the professor has obtained funding. Now, a lot of this information is sometimes present in the public domain. So whenever a university gets a big grant, say they have obtained a huge grant for a center for supercomputing or for a center for composite materials, then it will be known in the scientific press that such a grant has come. And you may find this even in the department web page that there will be a mention of a recent big grant which has been obtained by the particular university. So if you are able to tailor your email to this particular set of scientific tasks, then your chances of getting internship or graduate studentship or a postdoc is much better. Now, in the third paragraph, you write a few sentences about your own work and how this ties in with this particular research you want to do or you are interested in. Now here you can mention some of your project work if you have done a bachelor master's project or if your PhD thesis is in a similar area you can mention that here and so on. Or if you are applying for a second postdoc you may even mention your first postdoc situation here. Now if you are somebody who is a bachelor degree student you may not have a lot of material yet but you can mention that you have taken some courses in these areas which are prerequisites for doing research in that particular problem. And you can also mention that you have obtained good grades in those particular projects. Now, if you are a UG student, it is very important to give some concept about your particular plans for research. So of course, when professors look at an email, they will look at it from the perspective of who is writing this email. So the expectation from a person applying for postdoc is going to be very different from a person who is applying for a summer internship. So for a summer internship, typically there is a position where maybe a postdoc or a PhD student is doing some work and they need a UG student to come in and 
probably run some code at a large number of sample points or work with Excel spreadsheets or write a Python code and so on. And these kind of tasks would require a skill set which is somewhat different for the PhD from the PhD. So you can mention some of your skills as far as programming and some of these aspects are concerned. Now, if you are applying for a postdoctoral position or a PhD studentship, then you can probably do a sl small literature survey in the field where the professor is working and you can mention that you have found some of these papers which are very interesting for you and you want to further pursue this line of research and work with this particular professor. And I would also encourage in these cases that you can put in an attachment of a short proposal. So this proposal could be one or two pages and then this proposal could be something which this professor may be interested in. Now, it doesn't mean that you will be exactly working on this proposal, but it could be a starting point for a discussion. And therefore, this person will then realize that you are more at the level of a colleague rather than somebody seeking a job, especially if you write a few things about having conducted a literature survey and come up with a specific problem. So suddenly your mail has become from a document which is soliciting a position to something which is suggesting that you are a likely colleague and a fellow scientist. And this will certainly help your case, whether you get the postdoc or not, this person is much more likely to then reply to you. And this is especially useful if you bring in some of the person's own papers into the process, because remember that most professors are very committed to their research work and therefore they like the fact that somebody has read their papers and has come up with some problems to further increase or follow this particular research. Now, once you have done this, you can end your particular email by saying thank you very much and then signing off with your name. And if you have any web page links in Google Scholar, you can suggest that particular link here. You can just put it down there. And so if this professor is interested in further aspects, he can not only look at the CV you have put in, maybe you have put in a research proposal, but he can also go to Google Scholar and check your profile in case you have a few publications. Now, as you will realize from this document that the fact that you have a paper would greatly strengthen your case. And so if you have published a paper either in a conference or in journal, this is a good time to put in one of those PDF documents with this email because this person will then glance through this particular paper in terms of its title, abstract and conclusion. And then he or she is likely to develop some good feeling about your research capability when he sees this particular paper. Now, this is especially important for people who are applying for postdoctoral positions, less important for people who are applying for MS positions, and also it can help people who are applying for PhD positions and have completed their master's position somewhere else. Because if your master's degree has read to a paper or two in journal, then it certainly makes a very good case for this person as a trained researcher and his or her chances of getting into the PhD program with full funding become much more. Now, especially if there is a case where you are a BS student and you have written a paper, maybe a conference paper also, this will certainly strengthen your case because it means that you have figured out how to do research, you have some aspects of this. Now, there are people who may not have written a formal conference paper, but they may have written a technical note or they may have written a in-house document at their university, which is on a hot topic. So I know of some people who do a BS project and they develop a small UAV and fly it around and maybe they prepare a report for that. So maybe if this particular document is written at a good level in terms of its English, in terms of grammar, in terms of some of the scientific results and is a complete decent document, then you can also send this particular document saying that you have done this work and you want to pursue work in this area. Because remember that not all Funding situations are for people who have done scientific work. There is a lot of possibility for people who have done some type of technical or engineering work and even demonstrated things. So whether you have taken part in a solar car project or you have developed a drone or you have developed some drug delivery device, all these become useful when somebody is looking for a graduate student. So again, all these things you have to do in a very short space of time, space. So essentially three paragraphs, probably something which must be printable on one page of paper if you were to print this document. 
and also do not end this document by making all kind of logobria statements like you are very desperate to work with this person or it will be a great thing if you could work with this person or you have been waiting for your entire life to work with this particular person and so on because these particular type of statements detract from your collegiality which you want to convey through this email. You want to always convey that you are a fellow colleague in the scientific purpose and you do not want to seem or let it seem that you are somebody who is begging for a job. So this is a particular demarcation which you need to make. You always want to write an email as a fellow colleague who is wanting to contribute to science and you want the help of this senior colleague to further help to fructify your goals and his goals in a joint voyage. So this was some of my take on how to write a mail to a professor. And again, always remember that professors receive an enormous amount of email from people. So make sure you write to only select people after having done proper research on their background, having done some kind of literature survey on their work, and having come up with a pretty specific proposal as far as what are you going to do if you go to this person. Now all this work is never wasted because whether this person takes you or not, this particular small amount of research which you have done will certainly help you become a better researcher because you have got all this new knowledge and you will gain from it. So thank you for listening to my video. Please stay tuned to my channel for more such videos. Thank you very much.